Miller continues to rise. We saw it recede a little bit earlier today, but it keeps going up and up. A lot of people have lost power at this point in this area. And I got a Cubs fan here from go, Chicago. Go, go. And I know there's a certain song that you guys sing. You got to sing it for me. I'll do the best I can. In Chicago, they're singing Go Cubs Go. Go Cubs Go. It's closing down beaches in places like Jupiter. We'll have more from residents on what they think about this ending up in their backyards. Yep. Yeah, yeah, look behind you. Look I'm behind you. Going now. I'm going to get out of here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you better do that. You better do See this huge, huge pile of tree debris. Yeah, hopefully that will be starting to be picked up starting this Friday. Five people were affected by these toxic fumes. Three went to TMH. One is in critical condition. There is crime tape still surrounding the area. It's blocked off right now. Mario Pender originally pled not guilty, and he changed that today to no contest. It's simple to go live. All you have to do is hit the go live button on your status, and in seconds, your story can be viewed by the entire world. Now, Diamond Reynolds' video has been viewed more than 4.3 million times. And after all these lights are put up and the sun goes down, just like that, you're ready for the holiday season. Imagine a loved one's final resting place being littered with trash. But as you can see, that's happening at this Tallahassee cemetery. Thanks for joining us at 11, everybody. I'm Abby Walton. Ben has the night off. One visitor emailing pictures of that cemetery to WCTV, asking us to find out why this is happening at the Southside Cemetery. That's next to the Tallahassee International Airport. Tonight, our Aaron Lish went digging for answers. So, Aaron, who's in charge of cleaning up this cemetery and why is this happening? Abby, the city owns the cemetery, so it's responsible for the cleanup. I spoke with officials to see if they knew about the mess, and if so, why isn't anything being done? Southside Cemetery. It's the final resting place for hundreds of people in Tallahassee. But along with these beautiful flowers... There's an open grave just feet away from the pile of trash. We find this. Water bottles, beer cans, garbage just littering the grave site. I was actually very like angry right off the bat. Visiting the site, Brian Burke took these pictures. Uh, the most disturbing thing would probably be like seeing the American flag and stuff out there. City officials who are not able to go on camera Tuesday tell us they're aware of this problem. They did send us this statement explaining why the trash keeps piling up. We are in the process of addressing the issue that stemmed from the vendor not able to meet the terms of the contract. Until they find a new maintenance crew, the city says there is a temporary one in place. However, Burke says to him, it looks like they've dropped the ball. I just feel like the trash has been out there for a while, and obviously they haven't been monitoring it uh, to this point, so it kind of makes me wonder if they're actually going to follow through and do what they say they're going to do and keep up with the, the cemetery. Again, city officials tell me this is a recent termination of the maintenance contract. Abby, of course, we will work to talk with a city official on camera to see when that contract officially ended and when they plan to clean things up. All right, thanks for getting us those answers tonight, Aaron. Kids and parents are coming in and out of the ER here at the hospital. Those parents and students tell me the very scary details of this horrific crash. Yes, I was just shocked because I've never been at, on, in the accident like this. Lamarius Workman was riding that bus full of students Monday afternoon when he says it was hit by a tractor trailer. A truck just hit us, and we all, I ducked down on the ground. I heard people screaming. While Lamarius walked away unharmed, his mother says his son's call was terrifying. I was keeping calm, but at the same time, I was panicking, hoping he was okay, which and I knew he was because he called me, but, you know, people can call and be talking one minute, and the next minute they can be gone. At the hospital, we spoke with another uh, parent who gave us an update on his uh, child. He hit her. She flew over everybody in the seats, and when her face went into the window. Some parents say getting to the hospital was all a blur after hearing their children screams for help over their cell phone. When I heard my daughter hollering and crying. Uh, dad kicked in for real. Now parents and students remain at the hospital, hoping and praying for their classmates. People are streaming, calling, calling names, and you're scared. After an accident that will stay with them forever. As we mentioned earlier, one student did die in this crash. There will be grief counselors for all those students and staff at school tomorrow. Orcam version 6 is ready. It looks like a device a spy would conceal to take a snapshot. 
a rainy afternoon, Lahassee. But as you can hear, this is so much more. This is the Orcam My Reader. This camera takes a picture, then reads words on the image out loud. Oh, honor a woman with so many gifts. Roosevelt Wilson of Tallahassee uses it every day. It's not perfect, and they're still working on it, but it is so great. Uh, it's a tremendous help. Tremendous help. Roosevelt is 75 years old. He's a retired professor at FAMU. For nearly seven decades, he had 20-20 vision. Then five years ago, glaucoma claimed his ability to see. Well, you just imagine working in total darkness, basically. But now the Orcam is putting some light back into his life. If I want to read a book, I just turn the page and it, it'll read the whole page. There were nine hours and 500 miles between Kai and Nashville. Orcam is made in Israel. It's new to the U.S. and Roosevelt hasn't had Orcam for that long. I understand because he's got these buttons all over it. And Roosevelt isn't alone. He and others in our area get help with new life-changing technology here at the lighthouse of the Big Bend. I, I can't even begin to imagine. Visually impaired herself, instructor Alexis Reed says advancements are remarkable and will only get better. You know, it's going to be amazing in 10, 15, 20 years. Um, I know someone who is having training in June for a device called the Brainport and he has no vision, um, and this device apparently will allow him to see using tactile impulses on his tongue. There are a lot of adjustments I've had to uh, make, but I'm making it. Pieces of technology, giving a snapshot to people like Roosevelt of what's happening in our world. Performing before an entire stadium under the lights of Dope Campbell, football players feel the pressure. <laughs> So do the marching chiefs. You hold up a lot of strength. And it's not easy. Sharon Kay plays the tuba. The ones we use are around 35 pounds, I believe. She says it's especially tough at the start of the season. Your shoulder feels like you've been carrying an anvil on it, um, and you have this like lump and dent thing, and it's not good. But you get used to it, you get stronger. To be a chief, not only do you have to play well, you also have to pass a physical exam. You know, it's using your core, uh, using your apparatus to blow air through a horn while you're high step marching, uh, while you're running around the Seminole logo, or running out the garage door. Uh, so this, this does demand quite a lot. We put it to a test. With Michael Bunton's help from Titus Sports Academy, he uses this to monitor Sharon's heart rate. In high intensity training sessions, we're trying to get them to spike that up close to 80, 90, 95%, some of them. Running around the Seminole head is a key routine for Sharon, so we had her try it out. That's awesome, awesome job, really good. Uh, her heart rate started at around 140, 150, and spiked up to 185. Her max, estimated max is 190, so that's pretty high. Focusing on technique under stress is key. I think that's very similar to, to what would be a high pressure situation in a sport, for sure. When you have that stadium filled with 88,000 people and they're all just screaming and you're just sprinting, it's just this incredible exhilarating feeling that you like you can't be matched. An exhilarating feeling, especially for the world-renowned Marching Chiefs. Aaron Lesh, WCTV Eyewitness News.